I am Monique Swain. I am a women's health services provider. Um, I work in breast diseases and I provide care to women at high risk for breast cancer as well as manage women with benign breast disease and women suffering from gynecological concerns and issues as a result of breast cancer treatment. Genetic counseling is a series of questions that you would be asked first your personal history of breast cancer or other cancers as well as your family history of cancer and then deciding based upon your your history and your family's history whether or not genetic testing is something that would be appropriate for you. Um, based on that then we would decide what type of genetic testing would be appropriate. So would it be specifically BRCA testing for example or would it be a panel of testing? Um, and then from there, based on results, then we would be able to decide whether or not you would be a candidate for increased surveillance going forward or would your family need to be tested too um, as well for such mutations if you did have um, testing that came back positive. So in terms of whether you know or not that you've inherited breast cancer would take you having to do a genetic test. So the genetic test, as I mentioned before, can either be something as simple as bracket testing or something more extensive where you have a panel of tests. Um, in terms of whether you've inherited a gene or not, that test will come back positive for that specific gene if you have inherited this form of breast cancer. So for example, BRCA gene, BRCA1 or BRCA2, if that comes back positive, then we can say that likely that your breast cancer has been inherited. And then as a result of that, then your family members too would also need to be tested for that gene. So in order to be checked for breast mutations or, or mutations that put you at risk for breast cancer, the best way to do this is through a genetic counselor where you can have the testing done. That testing is sent off to a lab and generally within, I would say, a couple of weeks to maybe a month's time at the longest, those results will come back, allowing your physician to know, someone like myself, to know whether or not you are positive for one of those genes. Typically, though, if you have a personal history of breast cancer, genetic testing is paid for by insurance. Um, however, if you don't have a personal history or a strong family history of uh, breast cancer, then it is difficult to say whether insurance will pay for it or not. Your employer has no access to this information unless you give them access to this information and no they cannot fire you based upon genetic testing results. This is completely personal information and is in order to be HIPAA compliant we're only allowed to release that information to you. Pregnancy after breast cancer is always a concern of patients and we recommend at least two years after a diagnosis of breast cancer um, before getting pregnant. Um, the reason this is is because evidence has suggested that with a woman getting pregnant 24 months after breast cancer there actually is a decreased risk of reoccurrence of breast cancer. So I do advise that you wait at least two years before trying to conceive. So in terms of chemotherapy causing menopause, there is a risk that chemotherapy drugs that are used in treating breast cancer can cause something called premature ovarian failure, meaning the ovaries fail earlier than normal. Um, this can be permanent. Generally, this is related to age. Um, the older you are, the more likely that this will be permanent. The younger you are, the less likely this will be permanent. So women who are less than or equal to age 40 are about 45% likely to regain their menses after um, treatment of their breast cancer, whereas women who are older than 40 are less likely to regain their menses. So women between the ages of 40 and 50, it's about 10%, whereas if they're over the age of 50, the likelihood of them regaining their menses is about 3%. In terms of fertility preservation, that's just whether or not you want to preserve fertility. If you're thinking about having more children in the future, um, 
then what we would do is have you see a reproductive endocrinologist who is a physician who specializes in preserving fertility, meaning things like uh, taking eggs from your ovary and freezing them or taking um, eggs and then fertilizing them, which would be embryos, and um, freezing those. And then later on, implanting those embryos or either eggs in order to have children in the future. In addition to you being tested for hereditary breast cancer, it's also important to that males also who have potential risk for hereditary breast cancer be tested as well. So if you have sons, uh, it is important for them to be tested. And I know this risk doesn't seem high, it's much higher than the average population. Um, and it's also important for them to be tested because they may go on to have children as well, sons and daughters who may inherit the gene. So in terms of having risk reduction surgery done, and what I mean by that is having a prophylactic mastectomy as a result of a genetic mutation or having a risk reduction bilateral salping ovarectomy, which means removal of the ovaries and fallopian tubes. Now whether it's something you feel this is necessary for you, these decisions are, are, are personal. Um, I do recommend that those women who have the BRCA gene mutation at least consider a risk reduction bilateral salping ovarectomy, and the reason is, is there isn't adequate screening for ovarian cancer. We do have a blood test called a CA125 and transvaginal ultrasound, but unfortunately these tests aren't very sensitive nor specific to finding ovarian cancer. Having both the ovaries and fallopian tubes does reduce your risk of ovarian cancer by about 90%. In addition, it reduces risk of breast cancer by about 50%. So even if you don't want to have a prophylactic mastectomy, removing the ovaries and fallopian tubes will help to reduce your risk of breast cancer.